Hello. Good day, everybody. Welcome in, my friends. How are you? <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, man, listen, the enemy is really busy. Just when I was about to press play, the power just shut right down. <laughs> the power shut off. Hey, Miyoshi. What's happening? <laughs> Good to see you. Candice Colebrook, God bless you, all the way from the beautiful Luther. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Crystal, yes, Crystal, I have your books for you. Never came for them. All right, so I, uh, I have them preserved for you. All right, so let me know when you want them so we can get them to you. All right. Yes, 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 yes. We see um, Chantel. God bless you, Chantel, and Lakeisha, and Nisi. God bless Nisi. Amen. Five of breakthrough took place yesterday. And we got Ichando, my good buddy you haven't seen in, what's it, about 60 years. <laughs> yeah, Ichando's a good friend of mine. And uh, we uh, talked about a lot of spiritual things, you know, and, you know, we always were dealing with stuff, you know, warfare stuff and what have you. And so I know him, he's a boat man, boat guy. And so I speak blessings on Ichando. Very good guy. <laughs> I have to give him a call soon. Hallelujah. Now, I need you guys to share because we're going to go into some things right now, but pray that I can pray for some people today because I want to pray for some people today. I want to see how it goes, all right? So we let the Holy Spirit have his way. I like to have, I like to allow the Holy Spirit to have his way because when it's like that, then, you know, um, you know, he's pleased with me, you know, because I want to, I want to be in his will. But I, I, I really, um, I see a blessing coming for, for, um, um, for bonds. I don't know why, but my, as a burden for bonds, you know. There's a burden for Bonds, Bonds Gilbert, uh, and I, I really want to see God move for her in a very special way, so he will, so we'll get the glory, amen? God said he's going to get the glory in this situation, oh my God, he's going to get the glory, and no man will get the glory, amen? No man's going to get the glory. As a matter of fact, let me just pray for you. I just pray and cover the woman of God right now with the blood of Jesus. I pray that, Father God, everything that she's asked for you. I cover her, Lord, every plan of the adversary to fight her. I decree and declare that this is going to be the season of a victory. What might look like a problem is going to be a victory. And I release this miracle to her in the name of Jesus. And I release this miracle to her. And I speak the wonders of God. I call healing in every area of her life in the name of Jesus. Physical, mental, emotional, psychological, in every area. Let it be financial miracles. Let there be financial healing as well. In the name of Jesus. God, we give you glory. We give you praise. And we honor you today for bonds. Bonds, I just see God is doing something new for you. Amen. The Lord said, I'm, I'm doing a new thing for you. And you will see it. Amen. Some things have been shaken. But now God is, God is going to give you the victory. Amen. God is going to give you the victory in some areas that, that, uh, that you need you know, to see him move in. Amen. So God is, God is able. God is willing. And God is, is fighting this battle for you. It may not seem like it sometimes, but he's with you, Bonds. All right, God is with you. Amen. Keep on doing, keep on doing God's will. Keep on doing God's work. You're being perfected. You're being tried. You're being tested. Because God is, he has something greater for you. Amen. So stay connected to the Lord. Amen. The enemy, the enemy has really, really been after you in some areas. Because he wants you to, he wants you to give up and, and move out of position. But you stay in position. Amen. God has a reward for you that's going to shock you. Amen? Yes, don't worry. God, God got a miracle for you with your name on it. God have a miracle with your name on it. Today, um, as a matter of fact, when we do our next Zoom, when we do our next Zoom, we, we, we wanna, we're going to send you a link so you can come in, all right? Because I want to minister to you, I want to minister some things to you, but I don't want, I don't want the general public to hear it. It's going to be private. So we'll send you a link. So I'll, I'll specifically speak to you. But know that, know that when you come on, I'll, I'll really just... Uh, minister to you, amen, and uh, speak the counsel of God, so so when we do it again, we're going to send you a link to come on in, all right, and this is by invitation only, so we're going we're gonna to have you come in, and I'm going to minister to you, uh, so get your pen and paper, because it's going to be long, <laughs> amen, thank you Jesus, hallelujah. <laughs> I was the start of the show over bonds, Gilbert. I lose the sound of the shofar over all those watching and listening. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I cover this broadcast with the blood. 
I cover this broadcast with the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. There are a lot of people that have been going through stuff. You know, someone just called me to say, Prophet, I'm being attacked for nothing. And I've been made to look like a fool in front of my employees, in front of, you know, those who are, you know, who are my subordinates. And the person who's supposed to stand up for me, she right there acting like, like she don't know what's going on. She's trying to cover her tail. And she's trying to, uh, you know, play both people like she don't know what's going on. And so I've been attacked. Whenever you are chosen, whenever you're called of God, it ain't what you do wrong, it's what you did right. See, the reason why that individual came and tried to embarrass you in front of, uh, in front of your employees and those under you, and then your, 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 your manager didn't stand up for you, was because they, they see the glory of God on you. They see the power of God on you. They see the wisdom of God on you. They see the strength of God on you. So even though he was the boss, right? Why do you think he did that? He did that to knock you down a couple of pegs. He called you what he called you in front of everybody so he could try to display who you are and try to show you up. He could have called you in private and you could have correct that as managers and as leaders. You could have done it in private, but he did it in front of everybody. Because you know what happened? You're chosen by God. You're set apart by God. He knows this. Whether he tells you or not. She knows this. Whether she tells you or not. But there's a saying. Every dog has his day. You don't stand up for me. When it's, when it's, when it's my time. Then when it's your time, someone won't stand up for you. Because you could have said, no, that ain't true. But you, 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 you turned your head that way and you pretended like it was true. You pretended like it was true. Why? Because deep down in her heart, she, she wanted to see what happened to you. Deep down in her heart, she was in agreement with that. Deep down in her heart, she was too jelly backbone to say anything. Deep down in her heart, she was planning that. But don't worry. Whenever they warfare against you, like calling you out like that in front of people, embarrassing you, making you shame, making you feel bad, attacking you, attacking your credibility, attacking your character, attacking your work ethics, attacking your your uh, uh, your standards. They're not just attacking you. Touch not, uh, touch not, not my not, not my prophets no harm. It's a true saying. They don't know that they buck up into some serious problem for themselves. And because this person wanted to try to embarrass you and try to make you feel some sort of way when he could have corrected you in private or pull you aside and tell you, listen, this is what I feel, blah, blah, blah. He did it that why? What he's doing is he was setting the precedence that he's the big dog around there. That you don't know what you're doing. He wanted you to make he wanted to make you look incompetent. There are some people that want to make you look incompetent and make you look like you ain't know what you're doing. They want to make you look like you ain't know what you're doing. They want to discourage you. You you driving home, you don't even know how you're driving home. You don't even know when you pull up in your gates. You don't even know when you get home because it was such a powerful strike by the adversary. They're jealous of the fact that your name is being mentioned in circles. They're jealous of the fact that God has favored you. Whenever there's favor on your life, whenever God begins to bless you, there's always going to be someone who can come out there, all right, with that Goliath spirit, with that Saul spirit, that wanted to discredit you, wanted to throw you down, wanted to stop you. Let me read the scripture to you guys. Man's heart failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the face of the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Luke 21 and 26. Men's heart are failing them for fear, for looking. They're looking at the media. They're looking at their job. They're looking at at the uh, circumstances happening around the world, looking at the Taliban, they're looking at this, they're looking at that, and their hearts are failing them. People are falling and failing because what? Their heart can't take what's coming on the face of the earth. The virus is the weapon of fear. It's the fear factor that's being used. The liars is what they're sending. This is sent to make people be in fear. Many times, they could have been a blessing to you. Many times, God sent them to you. To be a blessing. And they turn around. And instead of blessing you. They prefer to see someone else get that. 
except you. Why? Why? Because you're chosen. Because the enemy has you on his radar and he don't want to see nothing come your way. Listen, the devil is sad every time you succeed. The devil is angry every time you get a promotion. The devil is angry every time you get elevation. The devil is mad every time someone blesses you. You hear me? Every time someone goes out the way and bless you and give you something or, or buy something for you or do whatever it is, the enemy hates that. Why? Because he wants to steal your joy. He wants to see you suffering, mad, angry, angry at God because God told those people to come and bless you. Many times they come up to you and God said, be a blessing to my servant. Be a blessing to that one. They have the money right in their pocket. They're talking to you. And they're debating whether they should give you it. Then when they give it to you, they give you the one in the back pocket, which is $3. See, God God knows their heart. But God will open the door for you anyhow. God said, I'm going to open a blessing for you anyhow. God said, I'm going to do it for you anyhow. They might try to slow you down. They might try to take things from you. They might try to shift you. They might try to pull positions from you. They might try to... To, to make you look like you're incompetent or you don't know what you're doing. But the Lord will fight this battle for you. Because why? You're chosen. You're chosen by God. Anytime you're chosen by God, the enemy will fight you. He'll tell you, look at you. You ain't deserve this position. How you get here? How you even get this position? What you doing around here? You don't even deserve this. How you get this? See, because the enemy don't understand favor. Favor is better than money. Favor is better than money. God can send someone right now and you and your problems and you and your doubt and you and your situation and they can, here's the keys to your house. Why? Because God sent them with the keys in their hands to give you. You hear me? But you got to pray through, guys. Guys, this is the season when demons are getting so bold right now. They're getting so bold. Listen, people are falling down. People are committing suicide. People are starting to do things that are unseemly. Because why? They have a fear was coming upon the earth. They're looking at the things. The scripture says, all right, the scripture tells you this. This is Luke. This has been written over 2,000 years ago. That man's heart will find fear for looking what's coming on the face of the earth. People are operating in fear. People are living in fear. They're living in rage. They're silently in rage and they're fearful. This spirit that's coming upon the face of the earth is trying to force you to do things you don't want to do. It's trying to force you to take you know what. It knows that there are treatments out there, you know. It knows that there are treatments out there that are, just as, that are just as good or better with no side effects. But it wants to push an agenda. So it has a fair component released to it. Those that are in power, those that are in authority, the hidden hand behind the scene, they know the power, again, of sound, vibration, and frequency. They're releasing these things in the atmosphere to create chaos. They're turning families against families. Oh, because you ain't got the vaccination now, you can't live in my house. Oh, because you ain't got it right now, we can't even be together. They're turning people against each other, uh, those who are vaccinated and those who are not. That's what the mark is going to be. The mark is the same thing. They're training people how to already the mark. Huh? Oh, you ain't vaccinated, so I got to call the vaccination police. You see, my cousin ain't vaccinated. Yeah, go right there, catch him right now. Lock him up. All right, yeah. All right, you can't buy the food, you can't buy the drink, you can't, you can't eat, you can't do that. Why? Because you ain't got the mark. See, what they're doing right now, this is a dress rehearsal for the Antichrist. But many of you will understand that you will be sustained supernaturally. God was going to give you protection. The blood of Jesus Christ will never lose its power. In a million years, times a billion years, the blood of Jesus Christ will still have the same protecting power. But you got to believe. See, what happened is the devil has taken away the name and the power from the church, not from God. Can't do that because God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He cannot change. It's only our perspective. It's only our position. We move away from God. God's never moved. We move away from Him. We move away from God. And they've taken away the name and power of the blood. I hear people say the blood, but I don't hear no power behind it. I used to hear back in the day, the wailing women of Zion and those old saints, when they said, Oh, the blood. You could feel the power vibrating in them. You could feel people being healed just when they said, The blood, the blood of Jesus Christ is against you, Satan. And when you hear that, I compel you by the blood of Jesus Christ. You could feel the whole atmosphere shift. 
But the enemy, knowing the power of the blood, it terrorizes him. It terrorizes him. Because if, if he had known, he would have never crucified the Lord of glory. He would have never crucify the Lord of glory. And that was his major mistake. And the blood is forever condemning him. When he hears the blood, that is a terror to him. Particularly if you believe it. I know they're saying it because you know that's what they say. We just do it because that's what they say. When you are salt and light and you know the power of the blood, when you get a reality of it, when you get a revelation of the blood of Jesus, you will be invincible in this season because that's the last thing he wants you to do. And what's coming upon the face of this earth, you must plead the blood of Jesus Christ over your life, over your livestock, over your family, over your possessions, over everything that concerns you, over your investments. I don't care what it is. Don't, I don't care if they call you kooky or crazy. We are coming to the place where we the dead angel sees the blood he passed over. Those of you who are, who are, who are, who are, who are, who know what I'm talking about, you know I'm speaking right. Amen. <laughs> amen, 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 amen. Edney Eagle. I understand. Ha <laughs> ha, boy. Etni, God bless you, my God. God bless you. It's a good friend of mine. I come the miracle man. If you hear Etni's story and his testimony, it'll really blow you away. I've always been a good friend. I've always got a you know, great spirit, you know. May God bless Eagle Eye. I understand, you know, he's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a great businessman, too. God has blessed him, and God has blessed him. And God has his territory. So, what I'm saying is, this new world order they're bringing in, it's already here. It's already here, guys. But the Lord will preserve his people. As a matter of fact, there's coming a season when God is going to cause such a wealth transfer. You hear me? Keep calm and keep listening. Stay to the end. <laughs> there's going to be such a massive wealth transfer to the believers if you position yourself. God will shift this thing in your season. You hear me? But God is calling for us to act of duty. We got to rise up now. You cannot stay on the fence. You cannot stay in the back. You you cannot be a bench warmer. You cannot be a pure warmer. You now have to go out and do what God has called you to do. And we need to rise up as a mighty weapon. One, one accord. One accord coming together on one accord with one purpose. Because the enemy is united. We are the ones who are divided. We are the ones who are talking about one another. We are the ones who who putting one another down. We are the ones who fight one another. But when we come together on one accord, we will destroy every plan of the adversary. I, I firmly believe that God, if we could get enough people to pray, and I'm talking about on a global scale, God could turn around and push this COVID back and push everything back for another 200 years. Because no one knows when the Son of Man is coming. We know He's coming. But no man knows the hour or the day. That's why He said, be ready. Be always watchful. There was 10, there was five, 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 five wise virgins, there was uh, 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 five foolish ones who didn't get enough oil for their lamps. Make sure that you have the oil in your lap. That means make sure that the word of God is in you. Make sure you don't become lukewarm in this season. Make sure you don't watch too much TV. You know what the lady told me? She said, she's the prophet, you know, she said, I've been listening to so much TV and so much stuff on this COVID, I almost gone crazy. Because every time I look at the, uh, uh, every time I look at the news, I begin to have more faith in COVID and what they're saying. And every time there's a different saying, there's a different, there's a different study that's coming out. And so what happened is I begin to lose my faith. I started to even get sick. See, you could get sick because it's called psychosomatic sickness. It's called psychosomatic sickness, sickness and neurological sickness. Why? Because it's a sickness of the mind. Now, we talked about working wounded. We talked about the working wounded. We talked about many people who were just making it by. Uh, they're going and doing what they do. But they've been through hell. They've been through high water. They've been through so much changes. But now God is saying, I am fighting your battle for you. I'm going to open doors for you. Where no man could have opened these doors for you. You would have seen God's hand moving for you. Some of you within the next 20 days. Some of you get an instant miracle. Just like two people came to me yesterday. And I was so blessed. Actually it was on Friday. And the young lady, she said, Prophet, you prayed for my son or my Savior. And he didn't have no way of going back to school. Thank you, Jesus. No way of going back to school. As a matter of fact, he owed almost $5,000. And that was pending. And, and, and on top of that... He couldn't go back and tell that it was paid off, uh, paid off in full. So I stood right there and I told him, listen, I don't have to touch you, but I can send the word. I can speak the word. I can send the word. You stay right here and we can send the word. And I spoke to him and prayed over him. And I told him, this is what to do. 
and I gave us my instructions because I don't want to do too much touching in the season. Tell me, you know, we get the green light. I'm not, af I'm not afraid of it, but I'm just following the protocols. Amen? And I'm running in the season with the Caesars. And so I gave him the word. She called me back screaming the next day and saying, Prophet, can you believe what happened? Say, he was just looking through his mail and found out that he had, he had almost $3,400 in this account from a COVID something uh, fund or re re repayment fund or they just was giving him a credit. And guess what? He was able to take that and put that on this, this bill of almost $5,000, which was basically nothing. Then on top of that, they just released to him, they released to him another four grand towards his schooling. You, you see how good God is? God released another four grand. So all together, he's gotten over one day, uh, one day over $10,000, over $10,000. Amen. And I told us that there's more coming. If they should follow the rest of the instructions, because I didn't, I didn't, I didn't feel that like they really wanted to do it. I feel like they will keep slunking on. Maybe they have some issues with it. I don't know what. I don't know what. I just know once you follow the instructions, you'll be blessed. Nothing strange. Nothing funny. Another lady came out there. She said, "Prophet, you prayed for my son, and there was no way he could go back to school again." See, this is another thing. See, God is going to do a miracle right in the midst of you, and He was so disgusted. He was just sitting here doing nothing. Nothing like when you got all kinds of brain power. When you got so much intelligence and you just sitting here doing nothing and you know that you know you're capable. And so what happened is he needed he needed a lot of money. But when we prayed and just touched and agree, I just told her what the word of the Lord is. And I said, you know, God is gonna do this thing. She turned around and told me, said, not only did he get the money and get back in school and get reinstated and get this. He got also a ten thousand dollar grant to help him. Plus, he's going back to school to complete his engineering degree. See, let me tell you something, guys. God is is in the miracle producing and working business in this time and the season. God is going to create miracles after miracles after miracles after miracles right in the midst of what you're doing. And God is able to do this thing. And you know what happened? They believe the word. They believe that word. These young people, they believed it. They just know that the word is true. The young man actually came and sent a seed back. This is a young boy. I don't know, he was about 19. And he sent a seed back with his mother. I was so impressed, you know. I was so impressed. And I said, you know what? Because you did this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lose even more. I'm going to lose 20 grand over your life. And I told him, 15 to 20 grand will come to you and it will be released to you in short order because you've done this thing. You know, ask you for it. You did this. You did this thing. And you send this back. Let me tell you something, guys. God is about to shift your destiny. God is about to shift some of you all to another level. One lady told me she was on a she was on a Zoom call, and she said she got such a mighty deliverance. As a matter of fact, she wasn't even getting the deliverance from from us praying for her. She got deliverance while I was praying for someone else. But she tapped into that, and she began to vomit. We didn't even know it. She began to vomit, and she began to bring up all that stuff that was hitting her. Now she said, "Prophet," she said, "I can't believe it. It's like I have." A new lease on life. I'm praying with such confidence. People are getting incredible, they're beginning incredible results. I feel such a zest and a zeal for life. And I'm feeling this energy like never before. See what God will do for you guys in this season is once you connect it, God will open doors. God will confirm it. But also God has shown you I'm giving you miracle ways to get out of debt. I'm giving you miracle ways to handle your business. I'm bringing back relationships. I'm bringing back the things that have been stolen. I'm giving you the contracts you need. I'm going to make a way out of no way. Yes, they did They did some things that was wrong. Yes, they tried to hurt you. Yes, they tried to steal from you. Yes, you went through all that all the time. Do you know what it is to put in all kinds of projects? You do all kinds of quotes. You get all kinds of material. You take your time. You put in these things. You put in all these things and they turn around and give it to their friend and tell their friend, come in, come in about a about hundred dollars uh, uh, under him and we'll give you this multi-billion dollar contract just for coming in under him a hundred dollars less because they take the contract you gave that you took months to put together and give it to their boy and tell him come in a hundred dollars lower and we'll give him the contract. And now what happened is you now out of money. You back up because you spend much money doing it. You put a lot of investment in it. You tie yourself up with materials and stuff that you thought you were going to use for the job. And now it is given to somebody else. You feel like they're laughing at you, right? You feel like they win. No. They win. They win. They win. They win. Let me tell you what's going to happen. Another job is coming for you. Another something is coming even bigger for you.
And this thing is going to set you up for life. Don't worry about what happened. Don't worry about this temporary disappointment. You see, you're chosen. You're called by God. You have an anointing of, of God upon you. Yes, they don't understand it. That's why that happened, because they have their little clique. They have their little tribe, and they, they try to block you out. But the Lord is turning things around for you. What they meant for evil, God said, I'm working out for you because you are called by his name, because you bear the marks on your body. You see, you are Christ's own. Yes, and if they hated Christ, they will hate you too. We talked about it in the last, the last session. And yes, sometimes it's a sure thing. Sometimes it's a sure thing. But guess what? God said, I want to get the glory of the situation. I'm going to show you an impossible situation. I'm going to show you a Red Sea moment. But I'm going to show you that I'm able to go before you. And I'm, I'm going to break the backbone of the adversary over your life. I'm gonna show you just who I am. I'm gonna show you that I can deliver you by few or by many. I'm gonna let you know I'll sustain you and you wouldn't even know how you're being sustained because you wouldn't even know how the money is coming because every time you look at it, you're being kept and you're being, you're being, you're being uh, sustained and maintained. And some of you, your life been on for uh, for years and you ain't pay a bill yet. Yes, I have, I have people like that. The word has been spoken over them. They still ain't get the money yet. Some people, they owe the landlord for years and they're still in the place. Amen? Why? Because the favor of God is upon them. Because God's favor is better than money. Yes, the man come there and make noise. Yes, he come there and threaten. Yes, he come there and do that. But he can't put you on. He can't touch you. can't do nothing. Because why? God had you there until he ready to move you and it isn't about money. Don't you think God could have paid that off in one day? Don't you think God could have taken that and paid off in one day? Huh? Don't you think he could have sent someone right there to pay that off 10, 15 years? No, God has shown you that I got favor. Huh? That you got favor. That the enemy hates the favor upon your life. That's why they want what you have. They never even want it until you get it, you know. Many times you get businesses. They never even wanted it. They turn it around. But when you go there, you carry such class. You carry such an anointing. You carry such fire on your life. You take something that nobody wanted. And when you finish with it, you turn it into a masterpiece. Now they come in for it. They try to take it from you. They try to use legal means. Why? Because you brought class and style to it. But they cannot take what God has given to you. Because God has blessed you with it. God has anointed you for the season. Listen. Listen, guys. Listen to me. You're going to be blessed. You hear me? You're going to be blessed and you're going to see God's hand moving for you in a very unique way. But the Lord wants you to trust him with all your heart. Amen. Sometimes things happen and don't look right. It doesn't feel right. As a matter of fact, it feels like getting worse. You feel like, man, God, the man prophesied to me and it looked like it got worse. They pray for me and it even got worse. They say this over me and I even got worse. As a matter of fact, I feel depressed. I fasted, I fasted and I thought I was going to get this amazing feeling. But as a matter of fact, I come up the fast and I feel like worse off. As a matter of fact, I feel depressed. That means that the enemy is working over time to block you that means some deeper issues in your life that has to be dealt with from the root that means some things in your life at the root that you've not dealt with or has been fighting you that means there's a deeper issue at the root this doesn't mean that it's not going to be dealt with no that, does, that doesn't mean it it means that you're closer now than you were before anytime you do a fast you will find that for the first three days you feel depressed you feel bad why because the toxins are coming up the, the, the parasites, the worms, they, they've not gotten food, so they can protest. They can release a chemical in your body that may feel depressed because they want to make you eat. See, these parasites, these leeches, they want to suck off you, right? That's why they got some people that God is going to cause you to fast out of their life. God to fast you out of their life, huh? God going to let go on a fast and then come around you no more. God going to move them from around you because they're leeches and they all, they, all they're doing is excreting their waste and, and, and their poverty glands in you and also they're excreting their their, their depression glands, yes, they make you want to eat, they make you want to eat junk, they make you want to do the bad things, so they excrete the because they want to get, they want to get fed, and so these parasites that hold on to you spiritually, as well as physiologically and physically, God is saying, I can't bless you, I can't bless you until you move them. You look like you don't move, like heaven. you like been around them. And so I can bless you the way I want to bless you. I want to connect you with some people. That's going to be an open door for you for the next 10, 15 years of your life. But if you carry these people with you, you will not be blessed. They will steal it from you. They will pull it down from you. As a matter of fact, some of them are even working upon you. Some of them are the ones who will fight you. Some of them are serpentine or serpentine friends. They are the ones who are trying to stab you in your back, trying to mess up your blessings. And you thinking they're friends. You carry them all around with you. And little, and little do you know, behind your back, behind your back, they're tearing you down. 
they're tearing you down. You can feel it sometimes because you sit in your house having a good time and you feel like an arrow hit you in your head. You feel a weight just drop on you. You feel depressed for nothing. That's because someone around you who you consider a friend is now talking about you so bad. See, but there's a connection in the spirit. There's a connection in the spirit. You hear me? You can feel it. If you're spiritual, if you're sensitive, if you're chosen, you can't fool the chosen. The chosen will pick up on what you're doing. The chosen might not... They may not say nothing. They may not, they may not have the courage to tell you, get away yet, just yet. But they know what you're doing because they know there's a crossness in their spirit. Whenever you come around with your fake phony smile, with your pretend, with your pretend smile, and you pretend this, we can sense it because I, we get depressed, we get heavy, we get cross, we feel angry because you want to use a platform to shine. You need a platform to try to steal. You ain't come to help. You you come to take, you come to steal, you come to, you come to hoodwink, but you will be exposed, you'll be seen, you'll be tied, you'll be, you'll be shackled, you hear me? Because you are messing with God's business. Stay out of God's business. Learn to be respectful and honor uh, those that are in a position and authority over you and know how to behave yourself when you go to another man's place. There are some people, they want to move so bad in God, but if you can't behave yourself and show honor, where you go, how you expect to have things for God to give you? You can't even be respectful for somebody else's things. How are you going to have your stuff? You can't even be faithful to take a $10 from the $100 that God gave you and show that to who God tell you to. How are you going to handle $100, $100,000? How are you going to handle a million? How are you going to handle 100 million? Can he trust you with that? Can he trust you with, with stuff? Huh? Can he trust you to be faithful to not get caught up? Huh? Because if you were mean when you had $100, if you get a million dollars, you just find more creative ways to be more mean. If you're cruel when you had $100, and when you get a million dollars, you just find more ways to be cruel, eh? Huh? You were always there. You ever say, why not man turn cruel when he get that money? No, he was hiding the spirit. He was pretending to be like who he was. And now you can't find him, you can't see him, you can't hear from him. Huh? Nobody's self-made. Everybody needed someone. Everybody needed someone to give them a break. There are some people who come in your ministry, you hear me? But they come with the wrong motives. They come to destroy the ministry. They come in to destroy. They set everybody against themselves. They are they're what I call fire starters, but in a negative way. They set up uh, people, and they come in and infiltrate. But yet they can't go bring their own ministry. Why? Because they ain't got no anointing for it. What they do is they piggyback off you. They pariah off you. They come and try to milk your people. They come and try to work your people. They come and try to throw things around so they can look like there's all that, but they can't do nothing on their own. Why? Because God already then God already left them. God already God already left them, and they can't show no responsibility. And they have a mixture. You hear me? A lot of these people say, "Oh, he's so accurate. He's so accurate." You want accuracy, but you ain't gonna have no manifestation because a lot of those people who prophesied in your life, they got a spirit of divination on them, and you'll never see no manifestation. You'll never see them come in the past. Why? Because they could tell you what it is, but it's from a wrong spirit. That's why a lot of people who prophesy over certain people's life, they never see nothing manifest. Oh, it was accurate. They could tell me what I had, what, what type of food I eat last night. But when last you see a manifestation? When last you see them come and tell you, listen, man of God, you told me I was going to get a million dollars and I got the million dollars. Man of God, you told me I was going to shift from this place and I got the shift. Uh, woman of God, you said this would happen, that happened. Why have you not gotten it? Because you allow these people to put hands on you. And they put hands on you. And they are not clean. They're mixing. They're talking God, but they're mixing with their cult. They're talking God, but they're doubling in and, 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 and things they shouldn't be doubling with. They're talking God, but they're not living holy. They're talking God, but they're sleeping around. They're talking God, but they're backbiting. They're talking God, but at the same time, they're doing all kinds of filth in the, in the night season. You hear me? They're not living right. Yes, they got a gift. The gift will make room for them. The gift will the gift will go forth, but you will never see nothing coming to pass over that. They can tell you what kind of things are Ah, uh, that's all right. Let them prophesy to me. You say, let them prophesy to you. And, 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 and I got to protect you because you understand some things in the spirit where I see it. But that's okay. That's okay. Let them prophesy to you again. Let them prophesy. Let them go ahead. And when you don't see nothing come to pass, then you will know and understand that you allow them to what? To read your spirit, to bind you up and hook you. Because that's a covenant right there. That's a contract right there. See, that's a contract and covenant. You think this, you give something or exchange something? No. You allow them to speak in your life. Right. Because why? They want to what? They want to get what you have. It is a divination spirit. It's all about the money. It's all about, all about getting you to sow and to give their life. So you maintain them and they'll string you along and they'll keep you going. I need to pray on so many people and pray for so many people who uh, we didn't see the fun. We said, we're not guys. You know, we didn't see for much. Oh, you yeah, probably the time you didn't see me. Well, you know what? 
so and so let me this person and let me do the person man and this is true and they come what's up and, and, uh, and they will tell me this and tell me that and then that's all wonderful well you know praise god you know, so why would what, 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 what i mean uh, keep keep going keep moving well you know what happened now everything lock up you know and then the person becoming in my dream now and they be trying to fight me, beat me, run me. And then uh, they, every time they call me, they're demanding money. And it must be an American money. And all I send them money. How much you send them? Well, I didn't, uh, I didn't send them five grand. Uh, how, how much you send them now? I sent them 10,000. I said, did you have any measure of breakthrough? Any measure of deliverance? Did you see one thing no cash? No, 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 not yet. Not yet, not yet, not yet. And on top of that, I have all kinds of serpentine dreams. I have, I have snakes have, have, are, are sleeping with me now. What happened? What happened? Because you have itchy ears. Itchy ears. It's here. This was someone who's listening. I don't know who this is for because this is not part of the, uh, what I went to say. But the Holy Spirit is speaking. This is for someone. You letting people prophesy in your life and they're not living clean. Do you know what is on their head comes down? <laughs> comes down to the whole body? And you wonder why you can't make it? And uh, guess what? they making it. See, because what they did is they exchanged your glory. They exchanged your glory because now you've given them a right. Oh, yes, yes, that's true. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, what, what else you see? What else? What else? What else? What else? Oh, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Oh, yeah. yeah. But now all of a sudden they start to make it. They going up. Why? Because they've exchanged for you. Yes, they saw it. Yes, they saw it, but it never come in the past. It's like you in prison. It's like you in a cage. You can see it, but you ain't touching it, huh? And it looks like you ain't getting it. Many people are multi-looted, you know what I mean? And they come back for the fix it. They come back for the fix it. Why are you to be so uh, engineers? Why you can't learn the lesson? Why are you to go back to the same thing all over again? And then, you know, at some point in time, I can say, you know, listen, go back to where you was and let them fix that because you've not learned your lesson. And this is the same thing that happens. People that get so polluted, God is about to bless them. God is about to give them so much. But because they have itchy ears, because they can't wait for discipline, because they can't lock in, because they, they, they want someone to do all it for them, uh, do everything for them, they can't wait and lock in and learn, all right, and, 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 and stay and become strong in the Lord and the power of his might. They want it quickly, speak the word, and it will be done. No work, no prayers, no fasting. No confession, no living right, no living holy. And guess what happens? This the same thing happened all over again. And then on top of that, some of y'all, God is dealing with some people, and you still go and bless the people, and God is dealing with them people. You go and get in God business, and now you open yourself up to the same curse they under. Because God is dealing with them. And you went, and you messed with them. You wanted to help them. You meant well. Your heart meant well. But you shouldn't have touched them. Because God is dealing with them. God is trying to get them. God is trying to get their attention. But now, because you gone over there and touched them, play with them, you went over there using uh, your funds, using your resources. Now, the same thing that's on them is on you. You can get beaten. You can get spent. Because God is saying, that's my child. They are, they, they, they disrespecting me. They run from me. They plan for me, but you helping them, you empowering them, you enabling them. You become just like them. So now you will share in their portion. You will share in the cut up. You will share in the poverty. You will share in the lack. You will share in the want because you need to let me do my job. Stop being God in some of these people's life because they are pulling you down. They're pulling you down to another level and you need to get rid of them because they only can pull you down. They can pull every bit of God out of you. They can suck the anointing out of your life. Why I'm saying this to someone? Because you need to hear this because you've been around this mountain again and again and again and the Lord is saying I'm trying to get your attention to show you I have something else for you but because you wouldn't listen you wouldn't listen you want your own way you will have to eat the bitter bread of regret and shame and plenty 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 poverty and lack because this thing is going to draw you out I've been calling you I've been calling you out from this, but you want to do your own thing. You know better than me. I'm God, but you know better than me. You know better than me. I've been around uh, uh, since the beginning of time and beyond. I created time. I created all these things, but you know better than me. Okay, you go ahead then. You fix this on your own self. You fix this yourself because you wouldn't humble yourself. You wouldn't let this person go because you want to do your own thing. And so the Lord is saying, I'm going to let you go. I'm releasing you. And now you're going to see when my hands is off of you. The the enemy is going to come and sift you like we. You need to fall upon God right now. Don't allow the rock to fall upon you. Fall upon God. 
get rid of that situation that you've been playing with. You've been playing with the situation for too long. And the Lord said, stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Because my judgment is against this person. And now you're going to come in the crossroad of what I'm doing. And this thing will catch you too. Separate yourself from them. Separate yourself from the unclean thing. Let me have them. Because I'm going to deal with them. And if you are in the way, you will get what they're getting. I don't know who this is for. But the Lord is saying, you got to separate yourself. Amen? Separate yourself. Because the Lord has shown in the season, I want to renew your power. I want to renew your strength. I want to give you promotion. I want to give you elevation. I want to give you energy. And, and, and you find yourself being drained from around this person. You find yourself drained around the situation. You're being drained. You don't even have the zeal no more. You don't even want to serve God like how you're serving God no more. As a matter of fact, you only serving God by the skin of your teeth. you just almost out, all the way out there. It's almost like you backslidden. But God is saying, I'm calling you you to repent before me i'm calling you to let this situation go because i'm gonna fix it stop trying to be a fixer you try to fix situation that god said he's gonna fix himself all right you want to be a fixer fixing everything fixing every situation fixing everybody's business and yet you can't fix your own loose this thing let it go god is gonna do this for you i'm speaking to someone right now and god is saying i'm restoring you the years of the canker worm the years of the palm worm, the years of the woodworm. The Lord said, I'm restoring your mind and I'm giving you peace. There's someone you could have lost your mind because of an individual. They made you feel worthless, useless. They made you feel like you're lower than a worm because they heap condemnation upon you. And then the next second, they turn around and tell you they love you. Use the best things since iced bread. Then they go right back to doing it again. And sometimes they even try to beat you, try to fight you. Huh? Then they come back and buy you flowers. And they buy you this and they buy you that. And you keep going back. You keep falling for the same old lie. You keep going back. You keep falling for the same old lie. You keep going around the circle again. You keep going through the same cycle over and over again. And the Lord is trying to tell you, I've already delivered you from that. I've set you free. Why go back in the Lodi Bar? Why go back into Egypt? Why go back into bondage? Why go back into that, that mess, amen, that I've already delivered you from? I've set you up. I've made you clean. I've cleared you up. I've blessed you. Now I want to take you to the next level. I want to display you. I had some things planned for you. I had some open doors that I'm getting ready to release to you. But you can't, you can't want me and want that. You can't want the devil and want Christ. You'll either love one master and hate the other. You can't love Mammon and love God. You can't eat at the, at the cup of devils and drink at the cup of the Lord. you got to figure out what you want to do. If God is God, then serve God. If Baal be God, then serve Baal. But the Lord is saying, I'm calling you. I'm calling you. I'm calling you to a higher level than me. But you've been double-minded. You've been sitting on the fence. You've been wishy-washy. And the Bible says, when you're double-minded, you'll not receive nothing from the Lord. Nothing from the Lord. Lord, because why? You can't make up your mind on nothing. One minute you're serving the Lord, then the next minute you're doing something else. Then the next minute you're back with the Lord. Then the next minute you, you believe this prophecy. Then the next minute you believe in that prophecy. Then the next minute you believe in that prophecy. Then the next minute you believe in that. God is saying there are some people that I've not connected to you too, and I don't want you with them because they're charlatans. Do you know that there are a lot of people who put the title on prophet, but what they really are is they're sangomas. They change the title. They can see. A sangoma can see. A witch could see. They can say they prophetess, but they when they go home, they have their candles, they have their they have their pots they, they look into, they got their altars that they have. Eh? They are marine prophets. If you don't even know who they are, a white garment a prophet or prophetess, they will look just like a regular Pentecostal. They sing almost the same songs. They even they even call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. But they 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 worship this marine uh, queen of the coast. You hear me? And, and it's almost the same thing. They worship this queen of the coast. And it looks so real. And you think, my God, I found the people. Then they start to invite you into deeper levels. Yes, because when you first start out, they'll tell you about Jesus. They'll tell you about this. They'll tell you about that. Because they get you wet. All right? They get you wet. They love bomb you. All right? They love gang you. And they'll get you in and in and in and in. And then they begin to reveal that, you know, there's more than one Christ. There's more than one Savior. There's some queens we serve. There's some kings we serve. They're just another two. And can you handle this? And so they'll, they'll let you in slowly, but surely they begin to open you up to see where you at. And then they, they begin to what? They begin to cause you to do initiation, strange things. You've been 
sleep with this thing in your hand. You begin to tie this thing around your hand. You begin to tie these rings upon your hand. You begin to tie these things around your neck. And so, so what happened is now you begin to find yourself having dreams where these beings visited you, where these beings give you gift, where these beings, where these beings are now beginning to what? Connect with you because they connect with you through a sexual level because that forms intimacy because there's nothing stronger than the sexual bond. Whenever you go and you have sex with someone outside of marriage or you or you fornicate, what you do is you create a soul tie. Many of you can't move forward because the soul tie that you had with the previous law is still operating in your life. Yes, you may say, man, that happened 15 years ago. That happened 20 years ago. That happened 30 years ago. It's still relevant. And that's where the lying and linkages, and that's how he was able to break some people's chain because it didn't seem, the person said, I haven't thought about the person in a long time. But when we finished praying and loosened the thing, all of a sudden they were set free. Why? Because the person 20 years ago still had a bound. Why? Because they was keeping them at the same place in the spirit. And so they could move forward in real life. Once it was broken, they were able to move forward in their life. Amen? See, let me tell you something, guys. When people put a hook in you, in the realm of the spirit, you can desire to be free. You can want to be free. You could pray and fast till the cows come home. You could even sow till, till you sow the last set in your, in, your, in your wallet, in your bank. But because there is an unbroken covenant, there's a covenant that has been still linked on the, the devils that will laugh at you. Demons will laugh at you. Why? Because they know that it's an unbroken line. That's why the limits are so powerful. Yesterday we did a session with an individual. She said, Prophet, I've never heard the limits like this. She did a one-on-one -on -one session. She said, I've never felt such a powerful level of deliverance. Amen. Like this, because we got to the root of things and we went deep. It is as where tree, tree. Even though you're gonna see tree, there's the roots below the surface of the tree, right? That was hidden. That was controlling the tree that was going almost 300 feet down, that was intertwined and twisted up and enmeshed with each other, going different directions. And so you got one root, but you didn't get the rest of the root. You got another root, but you didn't get the rest. Because because why? It was so deep, it was so long, 40 years, 30 years of just pure punishment. Huh? Develop those covenants. Develop those those traumas that open the gates for these things. So this is why you gonna see. Wow, I didn't get delivered in one session. Oh, I didn't get delivered in that session. Oh, I still feel like I wasted my time. No, you just you just wasn't aware that that the hidden spirits and hidden demons they were just hoping that you fall back and not do it anymore. They were making you angry with the prophet. Find an excuse. Some people just when they get a breakthrough, they find an excuse to get mad to watch it right. I see people just when they're about to be get a breakthrough, they find some sort of silly excuse, and they get offended for some reason, and they stop the process. And what happens is all that work that was that they were experiencing, they go back to square one because they found an excuse. All right, the enemy make them find some offense, and so they stop coming, stop doing it, and they go back to where they are. Now what happens? All the roots grow right back. As a matter of fact, the roots grow stronger. And now they. They what they do is they, they reinforce each other because now they interconnect with other roots. You know what I mean? And they go even deeper. They lock into things. You will find that sometimes when you go through the living process, you will find things come out of yourself. You won't even know it when they wake you up or when, when you come out of there. You wonder how you get on the ground, how you fall down, what happened, who, who was talking, who was talking. I know I was talking, but it wasn't me. It was something else talking to me because they had access all your faculties, every aspect of your being. They're there. Let me tell you something. There's a difference between demons and fallen angels. You hear me? Demons don't have a body. They don't have a body. Fallen angels do. They have a spiritual body. All right? Demons don't. Demons are more like the wind. See, they dispossess spirits between the, the Anunnaki or the Nephilims and the humans. So when they got drowned, when they died, when they got defeated, their spirits, their spirit was left without a body. They were humans once. They were humans, all these part humans and part angels. So now they crave human body. A principalic spirit could come into you and live inside of you for a few minutes and he go back. He can use your voice, a vocal cord, but he's not particularly concerned about possessing you. He can, he can channel a message to you, but he has his own body. But a spirit that is a demon, diamond, all right? They have many names for them. It's a breath or wind, all right? They wind, they are, they're like a the breath, invisible wind. And that's the last time people say they do do well. They said they felt the evil wind blow across them. 
or evil wind blowing their house. And it was the last time they prospered. Why? Because the wind that came in brought in demonic trouble. It brought in satanic, satanic uh, 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 pollution in their house. And so they never ever was able to what? Get to the next level. So what happens is these demons that are spirits, they love being in the body. They had a body. They want to experience everything that you experience. They want to know what it is to walk this earth again in a human vessel. Yet they are not of the earth, and yet they are not of what? Heaven. So they are, they are miserable without a body, and they cannot be accepted by Christ. They cannot be accepted by Christ. All right? They cannot be redeemed because their genes is of a totally different construct. They have a different cycle. They have a different genome. It is a is an angelic genes and a human genome. It makes for something horrific, something monstrous, a monstrosity, a monster, uh, something evil, hideous. All right. It creates the giants that came on the face of the earth and the Anunnaki's and the Geborims and the Zamans and the Raphiams and the Titans of old. These are the things that we contend with because it was always about the blood. It was about the blood. But what I'm getting to, guys, is when you see these things attack you at night times and come at you, they used to, what, having female wives. That's why they used to do these things. There's nothing new. They will come in and sleep with you. Why? Because they had wives before. They had wives before and they came down out of that particular state they were. They fall. It's called a fallen state. They fell from grace, but not because of ignorance, because they choose to have it. They lusted after flesh. They lusted after the women. They desired to have family. They wanted children. They wanted procreation. And so they did this thing and came down, left their exalted state, left their heavenly, uh, the heavenly uh, abode, and came down and took on the form of men. And they seduced every one of the women that they choose to. And they had children. That's why God said, I will destroy your children. And you'll watch them suffer. You will watch your children die and can't do nothing about it. You'll watch them die and cannot do nothing about it. That's when God sent the flood and destroyed them. And they, they, they were destroyed, you hear me? Because there was so much evil on the face of the earth. The Lord said, I repented that I even made man. Can you imagine that God said, I repent that I even made man? Because the evil was continuing in their heart. Because the enemy had them bound right up. The enemy had them bound right up. And he was trying to wipe out the human race. The human race as we know it, which is right what we're talking about right now. Everything dealing with COVID. It dealing with blood. It dealing with viruses. It dealing with injections. It dealing with masks. It dealing with the blood. It's about the blood. These things that come into your, your, your blood, some of them are DNA altering. They alter and they snip the genes. They edit your DNA. They edit the bloodline. Let me tell some guys, if you are of God and you are of of, of of, of Christ, who are you? You're like Christ, all right? So you will just like him. If I carry the DNA of a horse, that what that makes me? A horse. If I carry the DNA of God, what that makes me? That makes me a God. Not in the way you think. I'm not Almighty God, but I have dominion over the authority over what? The fish, the air, the earth. Not over my no fellow men. It makes me be a one to know that I carry the bloodline of the Lord in me. And I carry his power, I carry his might as authority. But at the same time, I also know that I'm not the Almighty. I know that I am only God-like in character. And I'm being transformed more from glory to glory as I what? submit myself and my flesh and my carnal kind of nature and my carnal kind of reasoning and my carnal kind of thinking to the Almighty God and let him shift some things in me. The reason why many of us can't move to the next level is because our carnal reasoning, the five-sensical world, the enemy loves the carnal flesh. He works with the flesh. He works with the ego. He works with the, 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 the perishing mind or the temporary mind or the devil mind or wolf cane. He, he works with these things because he knows he has easy access. That's why if you hit me, I want to slap you. That's why if you punch me, I feel like breaking the car. That's why if you... Uh, you, you, you burn my house down, I won't burn your house down. Why? Because it is the old law, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But in the new law, the Lord is saying, bless them that despitefully use you. Huh? Do good to them that try to do you harm. Love them when they speak deceitfully above you, women. Because it takes a lot of us to what? Move our flesh out of the way. Move ourselves out of the way. Huh? Yes, I feel like dropping a rock on your head. You scheme on me, you play on me, you take all my money, you take from me. Now you'll come smile at my face. I feel like just taking this, 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 this uh, harm and hitting you in your head. But the Lord said, release them. Release them. And we know we, we know this flesh is right there. We know we just come to the service and we just have the most glorious time in the Lord. Lord. Unless someone say something strange to us, let a car come across us. Let someone jump in our space. Huh? You'll see 
That, that person come out. Why? Because the flesh is so easy to get into. You can slip in the flesh and no even know it. That's why you got to discipline yourself. That's why it's called a disciplined life. That's why God said, if you go follow me, take up your cross and follow me. All right? Because you're going to be disciplined. That's what it means to be a disciple, a disciplined one. And you got people cross you. You got the wife cross you. You got have the husband cross you. <laughs> Amen? You got the children cross you. You got your boss cross you. You got your mother law cross you. You got your mother cross you. See, this is the fleshly life we live in ever since the fall. Ever since the fall, huh? Sin has entered into this world. And so Christ came to redeem the world. That's why the blood of Jesus Christ is one of the most powerful weapons in the universe that you could ever think about. It will never lose its power. And that's why we're going to say, God, give me your patience. Give me this life to live in you. God, help me to turn my life around. God, help me not to add to my flesh. They write all kinds of nasty letters about me. They, they accuse me for stuff. They even send in memos about me and saying I'm incompetent. I can't do the job. They're trying to get me fired. They're trying to take bread out of my children's mouth. They're working on me day and night. Every time I come around them, they get quiet. Every time I try to blend with them and say nice things, yeah, they get quiet around me because I know they're talking about me. But the Lord is saying, don't worry about it because, because they see something in you. They see something in you that they... That they, 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 they are just of. They see something you, they aspire to me. Huh? They aspire to me, that, but they can't give you a compliment. They can't tell you, well, let's say I admire your style, you know, but I prefer to pull you down. I'll hate on you. I'll pull you down. I'll talk bad about you. Huh? Or I'll be your friend when nobody's around. But the minute the click come around, I jump on their side and I start to throw you down under the bus. Huh? But when they go again, they come try to be your friend again. Huh? I will talk to you when nobody's around. I get you to do all my assignments, all kinds of stuff for me. But when, when the click come in, I jump on their side. And I, 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 I ain't even talking to you more. I put you down. I throw you under the bus. I make it and crack it all kinds of jokes with you. I, I, I keep you down. Why? Because, because I want to go where it's popular. I want to be in the in crowd. You ain't in the in crowd. You're an outlaw. You're an outcast. Huh? See? We are not really from here, you know. Do you know that? We are really aliens, you know. We are living only here as temporary citizens. We are our own, our real true home is heaven. That's why sometimes you feel like you want to go home. That's why sometimes you feel like I'm tired of this life. So that's why sometimes you feel like, man, I'm just frustrated with what's going on. I don't know why, but I'm just frustrated. I, I just don't want to be here anymore no sometimes. I, I, there's something else. Why? Because this is not your regular city. You have a city whose builder and maker is the Lord God himself. Huh? It ain't his regular hands. You have a, you have a, you have a, a, a supreme creator. Who's, who's building you a home that's not from here. We are pilgrims passing through this land. And guess what? When we are pilgrims, an alien in a strange land, in a strange land, huh? how do we sing the songs of Zion in a strange place? Huh? How do we talk about the goodness of God when we are living in bondage, huh? in a strange place, in a strange land? But well, the Lord is coming back. Huh? And he's coming back for us. He's coming back so we can have a heavenly abode, so we can live in the place where he's called us to live. This is why a lot of times we don't feel like we belong. You don't feel like you belong. You're doing all this work for the Lord. And the people still reward you for what you're doing. You're going above and beyond. And you're going out of your way. They're still giving somebody else the credit. <laughs> you're doing all you can do. And you still are not being loved the way you want to be loved. You're not being <clears throat> uh, honored the way you're supposed to be honored. Right? Because you're a pilgrim passing through. You are not. This is not your regular boat. This is only a temporary place for you. To come now, do some work to the Lord, and then God ready for you. He shifts you back to what? To your heavenly place. You were in God. You came out of God. God took you through time and space, brought you here, prepared a body for you, where you're fearfully and wonderfully created. And in this time sequence, within the time you were born, is the time He pushed you through. Amen. And on top of that, you the beat up a couple of billion sperm cells to get here. So it makes you what? A proper of purpose. A person of purpose, excuse me. <clears throat> you beat up several million. A billion cells, sperm cells, to get here. Your purpose. You have what? You have the Spirit of God in you. That's why they can't stand you. As a chosen, you have the Spirit of God in you. See, when God is getting ready to bless you, all hell breaks loose. When God is getting ready to bless you, you will feel opposition from the most likely and least likely place. Because God is getting ready to bless you. And you will see, at the end of the day, when all is said and done, when the smoke clears, you will see why the opposition came. Because it came to throw you off of your off of your game to get you out of your your path so the enemy could steal the blessings. See, 
The threefold ministry of the enemy is to what? To kill, to steal, and destroy. He wants to kill, to steal, and destroy. He's never changed. He's like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Amen. And I, I like it as to watching uh, the, those natural, those um, you know, wildlife films. I watch a lion when they trying to, you know, get a meal from those wildebeests and those you know buffalo. They will solve the storm, but they look for the sick. They look for the sick cow. They look for the sick calf. They look for the stray one. And they'll isolate that one. Once they isolate that one, the weakest link in the train, then they what? They pounce on this and they eat it. They devour it. That's just like how Satan is. He's looking for you to mess up. He's looking for you to make a mistake. He's looking for you to open a door. He's looking for you to, to, to keep a, uh, you know, something that you should have repented for. Uh, he wanted to keep it in color and say, ah, that's okay, that ain't no big thing. You see, he's waiting for you to have a check in your armor. And then he can, he can what, turn around and pounce. And then take the thing you have and carry it before the courts of heaven, and then turn around and accuse you of it, even though he's the one that initiated it, and the one who tempted you with it. You see, that's what he thats what he is. He's a tempter. He's the tester. He tests her. He tests you. God is using him to test you. He doesn't know it. You he think he's trying to destroy you, but God is using him to test you to see the integrity of a thing, because God knows what is in you. God wants you to know, wants you to know what's in you, and to show you that there's some things in you you don't even know. There's some power in you you don't even know. There's some levels in you you don't even know. You ain't touching nowhere near the level where you're supposed to go. The only thing holding you back is fear. And fear of your own greatness. Fear of your own power. Fear of what you really will do. What you really will do and be. Because this fear thing wants to keep you in a particular place of paralysis. He wants to keep you in a place of paralysis. Why do you think some, so much of us went through so much wounds, so much pain, so much hurt, so much things that happened to us where we where we feel like we're not worthy, huh? We feel like we're useless. We feel like God could never use us. We feel like we mess up so bad. We feel like you know, hey, listen, you know, my mom and my dad never validated me. They never told me that I was okay. You know, most of the time the validation went to my older sibling or they went to someone else. I always had to match. Uh, always have to try to see if I can match up or you know, always try to catch up or compare myself to this one because they were giving this one all the praise. I was the golden boy or the golden girl who could never do no wrong. I am the one who had to take up all the slack, do all the hard work. Everything was put on me, but they've got all the they got all the attention, all the accolades. Yes, I know. Yes, I know. Yes, I know. I, I, I sometimes go through stuff. Why? Because I feel like in life that is the same thing that's happening to me. And so because of this dynamic, because of this mindset, because of this hurt, because of this traumatic thing that happened in my life. Yes, it is traumatic because when you're going through it and you're feeling like you're Cinderella or Cinderfella. And everybody dumping on you and using you and playing with you and you grow up with that mentality. Do you know that even when you get in a marriage or you get in a great opportunity, you carry that same dynamic and mindset to the to the place you're bringing because it's operating as a as a as a record and it's playing in your life. And so what happens is a spirit of self sabotage begin to set in. And so you'll find yourself getting fired. You'll find yourself losing the job. You'll find yourself not going to take the promotion. Why? Because fear of exposure. You feel like you're not worth it anyhow. You feel like you're not, you not you, you can't match up anyhow. You just wonder when they can find out who you are. See, the Lord said, I do not make junk. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. He made you with trembling because he saw how awesome you are. He comes to you every night and watches you sleep. He watches you sleep. And he downloads stuff in you. Can you imagine that? I had to watch my my son sleep all the time. And it gave me the greatest pleasure. I had to watch my son play with his other friends. And it gave me the most intense joy. Because just watching him play, watching him sleep, watching his chest go in and out. When he was a child, when he was a baby, it gave me the most intense joy. Just doing that alone. Can you imagine? And when he wrote, when he wrote to say, look what I wrote, daddy. You know, and everybody said, oh, okay, he only draw a line. To me, I was like, man, that's the most amazing line I've ever seen. Nobody could draw a line like him. I'm sure all of you said that for too. Look at the way he draw a line. That line really awesome, you know. Man, he's, he's a genius. He can do great things. Man, listen, the, the sky's the limit for you. Because that's how God sees you. And we are carnal. We don't even see right. We, we only see the con. Can you imagine? Can you imagine his plans here for you? Can you imagine the Father's love? Many of us can't even receive the Father's love because Satan has done such a bang up job on us and so much negative situation has totally turned us away from God. God loves you 
And and guess what? He loves you with such an amazing love. God don't play favorites. All right? He don't play favorites. He reigns on the just and the unjust. He loves you with the equal love that he loved Christ with. Just as much as he loved Christ, he loved you if you're in the beloved. He loves you just as much and he will give you the same amount and he will not withhold back from you. It is your ability to receive. It is your ability to move past pain and hurt through barriers, through blockages, through things that were done. See, because everybody sees through a different screen because of our experiences and what we went through. Because if you don't get any healing and be get delivered from those things, you can have, have you got so much time receiving love, receiving blessings, receiving increase. You can feel like nobody really loves you. I, I, you know, I can tell you I love you a million times and you want to hear it a million times more because you don't believe it's true and you need to hear it again because you need validation. And so some people, when they get married in a condition, the person gets burned out because they have to play God to them because they can't, they can't receive the love. They can't receive it. So every time something goes wrong, you have to validate them and tell them how much you love them, how much they mean to you, how great they are. You have to continue to boost them up because they're so broken from such traumatic experiences that they had where they were so beaten down psychologically, spiritually, emotionally, and mentally. So they have an imprint of just failure, failure, failure. So you have to constantly tell them you love them. I just told you I love you two minutes ago, but I need to hear it again. You don't spend all time with us. You don't spend all time with me. You don't spend all time with me. Every time they want all your attention, they eat all your attention, they smother you, they, they take away everything because why? They gotta be in your face. They overcrowd you, they don't give you no time. They wanna merge with you. As a matter of fact, they can take a they can take they can take a straw and, and suck it at you, they'll put it right there and join themselves to you because they have no personality. The personality that they have is so submerged into what? Into a altered state of 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 demonic of demonic experiences that it is hideous for them to even contemplate that so what happens is this spirit craves attention that's why a lot of people they have to dress up in such gaudy stuff yellow hat yellow dress yellow pants huh they have to dress up in high heel shoes this high of the ground why they have to be bodacious they have to be loud they have to be the one getting all the attention they have to be the one who's loudest who make the loudest noise the loud mouth the beginning one why because that's the way of getting attention that's the way of getting validation they get the validation when you look at them that's why some girls they don't they not, not that they necessarily want to you know to have sex or track bail they just do that because they want attention that's how they get love when you look at them and say oh look at you wow look at you Ooh, woo. wow what happened they get their validation they get off on that they get their sense of being so they wear tight clothes they wear clothes that is very revealing because that's how they get their sense of self that's why you see women come to church but i mean I mean, there's no, there's no, there's no room for the imagination because they wearing the stuff that's so tight, uh, you, you know everything. You see just how they design, how they made, right? Why? Because this is how they were taught to get attention. This is how they were taught to get love. This is how they taught to get their self esteem built up. So they get their self esteem through validation. They get their, their self esteem through giving up their body because their body represent a love. So when a man uh, shows them attention. Huh? They feel his love. When a man beat them sometime, they feel, you know, well, he gave me attention now. He wasn't giving me attention now, but when he slapped me inside my head, knocked my teeth in my mouth, he's giving me validation. He loves me. See, he knocked my teeth in my mouth. That shows that he loves me. No, it shows that he's abusing you. It shows that you you have a situation where you are of you are a glutton for punishment because you have a low self worth, low self esteem. So you track and you bring these things into your world you because you are a magnet for it. Let me tell you something. A fly will always be drawn to what? To garbage, a fly will always be drawn to what? Feces. A, a fly will always be drawn to dead things. Some people in the realm of the spirit, they are walking dead. They have a dead person in spirit walking around them. So they attract <laughs> these things. They'll go from one person to the next person. And they all have the expectation that it's going to be different. But when they turn around, it's the same thing with a different person. They attract these things in their life. Because in the realm of the spirit, that's what they're saying. That's the that's what they're giving off. They're giving up the signal of a dead person, of a dead thing. They're giving a, a signal of come use me, come play with me. All right, come use me, come take advantage of me. Why? Because that's the that's the that's the personality and that's the output of what they give out. So it's being returned to them. Whatever you sow. You will what? You will receive. You'll reap. It'll come back to you. So people treat you according to what you reflect back to them, and so they will measure you according to that. Low self-esteem, low self-worth. They will pay you according to your self-worth. Yeah. If you feel low and don't feel like you deserve more than five hundred dollars a week, then they will give you two hundred dollars. So you can just be angry and mad with them, amen. Because they feel like you're worth it. If you feel like you're worth a thousand dollars a week, they do that because they can sense it on you. People can sense certain things around you, and they sense 
Lord uh, Spirit. Some of us have to look the Spirit around. Yeah, we look good on the side. We look good. We dress good. We smell good. We look good. We dress nice. Uh, we even have a nice car. Uh, your spiritual IQ, your spiritual mama is loser, 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 loser. And yet you pray and God, you fast and pray. But because of what happened in your past, because of the generational stuff that's been happening in your past, you've lost some things, amen? You've lost some things. Hold on, guys. You've lost some things in terms of your self worth. And so you've been getting paid based on your self worth. You've been getting paid based on your self worth. Some of you, your mother gave you spiritual bad to protect you, but it did something to your spiritual self. Some of you were given things to drink to protect you back in the day. Some of you went to certain people, they cut the cars, and they, they give you readings, and they did this to you, and you paid them and exchanged money. You made a covenant with them, and so your self-worth has been affected because now it's taken on another form. It's taken on another place. And so you exchange your wealth for poverty. You exchange your blessing for curses. Yes, and now it's taking place. Yes, you might have gone to get a child. You went to them. They give you something to drink until you drink this and you can conceive because you can't conceive. And now your child is, is a devil. Uh, it's a devil seed. This child is worse off than the devil. Why? Because that child was conceived through what? Through occultic means. The child was conceived through you going to an occultist to get that done to open your womb. And now the, the child has been what? Has been given the satanic gene in him. And he come out and he's giving you trouble. He's giving you problems. He's a horrible child. All right? Some of them are some of the Satan seeds. And they, they're drawn to the occult. They're drawn to dark things. They're drawn to, to, to just hideous things. Why? Because you went to them to do that. And so that opened up They're after the order of Cain. That's the Cain order. That's the Cain order. Cain was of the wicked one, the Bible says. He was of the wicked one, all right? Cain was of the wicked one. The spirit of Cain is still alive and well and operated in plenty of people. But the Lord is coming to break that, amen? The Lord is, the Lord is going to break that, amen? Because I see in the realm of the spirit, so much promotion. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord said there's so many people going to start businesses. Yes, in the times of famine, in the times of lack, in the times of what they call a pestilence, the Lord is going to give you ideas so you can capitalize on this. How do you think the wealth transfer is going to happen? You think some people can put it in their lap? Yeah, for some people it will happen. But for the most part, God will give you witty ideas. He'll give you inventions. He'll give you ideas that you could turn into profitable businesses. And in this season, God said, I'm moving all the blockages. I'm moving all the red tape. I'm taking away all of the haters and people in position that are demonically inspired to block you. There are some people who have been inspired by the adversary just to block you. There are some people who have been inspired by the adversary just to take you down. There are some people who have been inspired just by the adversary to be a bane in your side, to be a thorn in your flesh, to be a sore in your eye. Why? Because it's their assignment. They come for that. But the Lord is going to put an angel in your way. He's going to send you an earth angel that's going to open doors to you. He's going to remove that person out of the way. He's going to give you an earth angel that is in position to open the door for you so you can get your yes. Your angel helpers shall locate you. Your angel promoters shall help you. Your angel... Rescuers will rescue you in the season and they will announce you, they'll promote you, they'll help you. Many people have been turned down, huh? Because their promoters and their helpers have been turned off from them, amen? And help other people out. Then the season, God is returning and restoring to you, which was stolen. God is saying, Get ready for some of you. You've been, you've been praying to God and asking God to bring your husband back. God is bringing your husband back. Yes, God is bringing your husband back. There's about two or three people on this live. You've been asking God. To change your husband and you've been asking God to bring him back a changed man all right bring him back a changed man because a sexy Sally a strange woman stole your husband stole your husband this lady she was talking about how you know she said look, look at this man right she saw him in church and she said man I have a confession to make she said when I was in the world I came to visit this church and I saw this man and he was it was another church at another time and she said I wanted him so bad she said I didn't care I just wanted him you know he was my ideal of what I wanted the man and I went and I froze his marriage I froze his marriage they call it icing I ice his marriage this man turned cold towards his wife this man find fault with his wife this man became become uh, cross with his wife and he filed for divorce and married the same woman you know what I mean and, and eventually they got divorced and he moved on and then she, she 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 became a Christian and she saw him later on down the line and she told uh, she told a friend you know, I'm so sorry I destroyed that marriage. You know, I was just so selfish because I was in my flesh. And now look what I've done to this man. He never caught himself after that. He never caught himself. Amen? There are some people that will target what you have just because they want it. Just because you have it. 
Right? They don't even want the person. They don't even want the business you have. They just want what you got because they see the way you're moving. They see the way God has blessed you. They can't stand to see you blessed. So they operate in the office of Satan because his job is what? They kill, steal, and destroy. Amen? And he wants your joy. Right? The joy of the Lord is your strength. And so because you are operating in the joy of the Lord and in strength and power, he has a problem with it. He has a problem with it. And so he'll rise up and inspire and entice people that are going to what? Be right after him physically. They're going to try to pro, uh, pursue you and attack you and try to uh, speak evil against your blessings. But in this season, the Lord said, they will not be able to touch you. They can't touch you. They can't touch you because the blood is going to speak for you of better things. The blood is going to open doors for you. The blood is going to elevate you. The blood is going to keep you at a position where you're going to see God's hand move for you. No one stop you in this season. You're going to be unstoppable. You're going to be unstoppable. God says, I'm restoring the years that the Kanker woman stole him. I'm going to restore the years that they try to uh, prosecute you. I'm going to return things to you in another way. I'm going to move those things that the enemy tried to do through people to keep you bound, amen, and to try to falsify evidence against you and to make you look like you're a criminal, to make you look like that. But God says, I, I see everything. I see everything. And I will judge. I will judge in my time. Though it seems like it's not going to come to pass. Though it seems like God is taking long. You stay in position. You give God glory. You work on self. You work on you. You work in love. You forgive. You release. You forgive. You release. How I know? How I know? Because I've been through it myself. I've been through it myself. And I thought I forgive the person. And then I happened to see him downtown. And I feel like running him over. <laughs> so I said, you know what? I had to go work on myself some more. I do some more forgiving. Some more releasing. I do some more forgiving. I release. I release. I forgive. I release. I release. I forgive. I forgive. I forgive. Till when I see them, it doesn't matter anymore. It's emotionally blank. All right? I can see them and say, hey, how you doing, man? All's well. Great to see you. Good to see you. All's well. Give them a high five. You know, say, hey, listen, brother, love you, man. All right. Keep it, keep it moving. I didn't make a hang with you every day. I didn't even come and break bread with you. But I do leave you. I don't renounce any, any, any part I had in that. Or I also release and renounce anything I've done to hurt other people. Because, see, see, you might not recognize it, but you've done the same thing yourself in certain ways and you might not even recognize it. And so they might be uttering curses on you. You don't even know that. They may be uttering curses on you for what you did to them. You don't even be aware of it. All right? All right? And that's why it's so important when a, when a person asks you, hey, you okay, man? Are we good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know you're lying. You're not good. You know you don't like what they said. You don't know you, you know you don't like what you thought you heard. Because remember, perception is nine tenths of reality. If someone perceives something of you, I can tell you right now, it can take Jesus to, ch to change their mind. When someone have you in a particular mode of being and seeing and doing, you gotta have God to change their mind. You could try to free yourself up, you could try to tell them it ain't true, you could bring them definitive proof. As far as they're concerned, that's what it is, and use that. You cannot get yourself out of that. Guess what? The best thing you do is move on. Move on and shift. Move on and shift for them. Because they already have you in a certain box. They already have you uh, like that. And that's how they want to keep you. Because even though there's a lie, they still put, they still uh, uh, they still will believe a lie. They still uh, would rather believe a lie against you. So I've found that when you try to defend yourself and try to tell them, no man, that ain't how it is. And this ain't happened and that ain't happened. And they bring all this accusation against you. And every time you turn around, there's another accusation. So you know what? You say, listen, man. You no, know, hey, everything is all right. But you know, I'm I'm gonna just I'm gonna just dip out now. You know, you keep you keep it moving, and um, you know, you catch up, and you go your way. You you go your way because why? You are moving yourself out of their scrutiny and having to jump through hoops because for you to be validated, you have to go through all kinds of hoops. You have to accuse me every day, and that's a relationship. I relationship based on this accusation and and, and innuendos and, and 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 all kinds of foolish stuff. You always bring in some sort of thing about me. There's always something you find out about me. And there's nothing ever good. So, guess what? You you move your own way. Because why? you chosen. When you chosen like that, they will bring those things against you. They will try to hurt you. Because why? It's a way to, it's a way to control you. It's a way to manipulate you. It's a way to keep you under their foot. It's a way to stop you from moving forward in the things of God. Hmm? Go your way. Go your way and, you know, let the peace be. Huh? What, what did Abraham tell, tell Lot? Choose what side you want. If you go to the left, I'll go to the right. If you go to the right, I'll go to, I'll go to the left. Whatever you decide to do, I'll do it. Why? Because for peace sake, for, for peace sake, 
you know, we don't operate like this. You go your way. And Lot chose the most lush part of the land. See, everything that looks good ain't always good. Everything that looks green, everything that looks like gold ain't always gold. It's something fool's old. Sometimes it's green until you recognize it was an illusion. Don't always go after what you see from your eyes. Ask the Holy Spirit to lead you and guide you into all truth. Amen? Ask the Holy Spirit to lead you and guide you into all truth. Because a lot of people have been deceived in this last of the last days. Why? Because they could go after the thing but look with their eyes. Let the Spirit of the Lord guide you. Let the Spirit of the Lord guide you. Yes, yes. Judge Franklin, God bless you. Separate me now. Paul and Barnabas. Yes. Be led by the Spirit of the living God. Amen? Most times we used to tarry. Remember, remember tarrying before the Lord? Remember the church we used to tarry before the Lord? We didn't care about no programs. We didn't care about no 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 programs and no no you know no 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 uh thing they're doing you know uh we, we, we didn't care about that what we care about is we care about god's presence so we will tire before god we'll wait before the altar and then when the lord releases we'll go forth amen and we, we and, and the power of god will fall people get delivered people get set free things chains were broken and god god caused the church to grow but you know Right now, the Holy Spirit got 50 minutes to move. If he don't move between the song, the song, the song uh, service, and the, and the announcement, that's too bad. And then we move on with a program. So what we become? We become a what? A social club. And so, so we brought the Holy Spirit. And, and, and now you expect miracles happen. You expect miracles happen. And you want to give in the Holy Spirit three minutes of your time. Uh, and, and if he don't move in the time, is 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 over. All right. You're more concerned about your social standing. And then you don't preach upon, you don't preach about the reality of spiritual warfare and demons and what's happening in this land. Because, because the people who you try to track, they don't want to hear about that. They seek a sensitive. So you want attendance, you want numbers. So you want to talk about the demonic. You want to talk about uh, 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 the, the fact that, you know, we fight an invisible foe that's powerful and want to destroy them. You tell them nice things. You tell them things that they want to hear. And so you, you, you turn them into what? Weak jelly bag cotton candy Christians. And so they have no, uh, they have no frame of reference for when this war is coming. You see, you see what we're living in? You see what we're walking into now? You see what's happening? So we got secret center of churches that are just setting out these uh setting out these memos and, and, and they're they're turning church into a rock star concert because they want entertainment. It's entertainment now, it's all about entertainment, it's about the numbers, it's about the mega churches and mega ministries. And so you'll find very few churches are really growing strong. Those who believe in the lens they preach the whole gospel and counsel of god and you must see people set free and really love people you'll find them fine between but if you can give me a rock show a rock concert if you if you can let me do what i want to do live what i want to do live how i want to live dress how i want to dress all right do whatever i want to do all right then it's okay church growing church growing but but busted hell wide open because you got to tell people to sin don't talk about sin now don't talk about sin don't talk about sin that has turned some people off from the God. You know, God is loving God. He loves everybody. Don't talk about your lifestyle now. Uh, God loves everybody. And you don't know. You don't know. Don't judge. Don't judge. But the Lord has standards. He has it in His Word. Nobody is judging nobody. The Word of God is doing that. Your conscience will judge you. Even those who don't hear the gospel, they can live by what I call, they can live by what I call the dispensation of conscience. The dispensation of conscience. Your conscience already tell you what is right or wrong. God put it in you. So you have the conscience. Your conscience that God built into you. He built it into His program. He built it into your program. You know when you're doing right. You know when you're doing wrong. Many people have, have caused their conscience to be seared with hot iron. That means any type of sensitivity to God or righteousness, they, they went beyond the programming that God put in them and they seared it with a hot iron. That means it's corrupted. That means it's, it's, it's seared. All right? It's destroyed. So now what happens is they, they, they give it over to their lust. They give it over to the things they want to do. They override, the, they override the programming that God put there as a safety, as a governor. Huh? And so they, they, that's why they can kill someone, bleed them out. And they go over to the dark side and they can watch someone die. They can do hideous things. Go blow up people. Blow up this, blow up that. Why? Because they've gone over to the dark side of the force. Because they've been, become reprobate in their thinking. It's like a hot iron, ironing their conscience. So now there's nothing there because it's all totally seared. It's blackened. Have you ever had a seared stick? Or, or blackened um, stick? Or seeing cold when it becomes red hot? You know, seared. So there's nothing there. It is dead. So they, they've, they've, they've figured out a way to compartmentalize their life, to do these hideous things. And so they don't want to hear about God, and they don't have no intention of, of, of having God. They believe in the God of this world. They believe in the God who controls all things. They believe in the God of forces. That's a lot of people, they want to believe. They don't believe Satan is a real entity. They believe he's a force. They believe he's an ideology. They believe he's a concept. But they get a rude awakening. 
where they see this being actually walking and coming on the land. You hear the, you hear the scripture says, men's heart are failing for the sea upon the face of the earth and was coming on the land. These are things that can walk up out of the sea, walk up on the land, come up out, down out of the air. They're coming down out of the air. They're going to walk on the earth and men's heart would fail them. It's failing them now. It's failing them now. All right. These people that we're talking about are the ones that are going to be the wheat among what? The tears, the tears, the tears, the weeds. They're going to be pulled up. And so you're going to see a lot of things, strange things happening within the next two or three years. And it will baffle some people's mind. You can see strange stars and things coming down out of the earth. You can see things in the atmosphere that's just going to see. You can see, did anybody else see what they just saw? Because nobody will believe me if I tell them. Because that's what's happening. Because the powers of darkness are drawing down. The heavens will be shaken. What will be shaken will be shaken. The heavens are being shaken now. The heavenly powers, the powers of heaven. It means the spiritual powers in the heavenlies. They're being shaken. They're being given their chance to come down. And they're coming down. They're being shaken. They're being let loose. They're being given their 50 minutes of fame to try to do what they can do. Because it's being set. The, the stage is set. The cosmic war is here. The cosmic battle is here. The testament in place. We're getting ready to make our moves. You hear me, guys? And this is the end game. You're living in the greatest time and the greatest harvest of the Lord Jesus Christ because we've seen several billion souls that are going to be coming to the Lord. People are getting saved left and right and center. Why? Because they know that people are dying like flies. No man is saved. No man has promised tomorrow. Huh? No man has promised tomorrow. The point the man wants to die. But after that, the judgment. So you got to make it right. Get it right. Get it right. Now, I need you guys to share this. I'm going to pray for you in a second. Share this. Share this broadcast. Let me see you guys share this. Hello, Wendy. Haven't seen Wendy for a while. God bless you, Wendy. I think it's Wendy Trimming. God bless Wendy. Hallelujah. Great. I see people people share. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I release a blessing. I release a blessing over over Michelle Carol Knowles. I release a blessing over Michelle Carol Knowles. I release a blessing over Michelle Carol Knowles in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I release a blessing over Sheikh Okahari in the mighty name of Jesus. I release a blessing over Donisha Thomas. I release a blessing over Marcia Green in the name of Jesus. I release favor, thank you Jesus, over uh, Apostle Zachary in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you Jesus, thank you Jesus, thank you Jesus. I release favor, favor over him, thank you Jesus. I release favor, let the favor of God that make it rich and out of the sorrow fall upon him. Let the blessings of the Lord that make it rich and out of the sorrow fall upon him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I release a blessing over Tyann Williams. Thank you, Jesus. And over Tanika Green. Thank you, Jesus. Let the fire of God fall. Let uncommon doors of breakthrough meet you on your way to your business, to your job, to your place of uh, rest, wherever you're going. Let the blessings meet you. I speak supernatural protection over you, all of you that are on this line. Strange things are happening. Strange things are happening. I come against the spirit of death. There's a spirit of death over the land. There's a spirit of murder over the land. There's a spirit of heaviness that's been hovering over the land, over the, the world indeed, over the world. But in some, in some places it's much stronger. I come against every plan of the other adversary. I come against every spirit of incarceration that wants to imprison the people in the name of Jesus Christ, in their own country, within their own city, in their own house. I pray that God, even now, that you will make a way of escape. I cover Nisi with the blood of Jesus, and I release a blessing to Nisi in the name of Jesus. I release favor to her. I speak a blessing to Eric Coops. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, let the blessings flow. Let uncommon valor and uncommon favor flow, like never before. Let there be no interruption. Let there be no interruption. God, any reprisal, any attacks of the adversary, 
that the enemy wants to bring. I bind it and cancel it. And I curse it to the roots. I sever the ties. Every, every, every bowl like Goliath spirit that is coming up to our gates, that are coming to our gates to fight us, I cancel your plans right now. I curse your plans right now. I release the blessings of Bianca. I release the blessings of Bianca Taylor, of a girl in the uh, Dulcio. I release the blessings. Thank you, Jesus. I release favor, and I release the sound of the shofar over them. Thank you, Jesus. I release the voice of the Lord to war on behalf, to war on behalf, to war on behalf, to fight every demonic spirit that's been fighting against them. I release the presence of God to flow. I release the fire of God to flow. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Even now, there's someone, there's someone you've been asking, you've been asking God <coughs> for direction. You've been asking God for direction. And you've been saying, God, I, I still feel like, you know, I, I'm blessed, but I still feel attacked. I still feel a spirit of depression. I still feel a spirit of heaviness. I still feel like there's something still fighting my life. You've been feeling this way for a little while. You've been feeling uh, there's nothing that you could put your finger on. There's no outward shine signs of you being uh, you being attacked, but there's something of an internal conflict. It's like something deep within. You feel like there's something that's been fighting against your life, and this is you. It's a mind battle. This thing has been trying to make you doubt your salvation, make you doubt that everything you're doing uh, is of God, and make you feel like nothing is going to work out for you in the long run. This thing wants to steal from you. Well, I cannot, I can't rag that. I, I strip it at the root. I snip it at the root. I spread it at the root. I rip it at the root. I cut it over your life. I command a spirit that wants to make you feel like you're missing the mark, that you, you, you know, you're not in God. It makes you feel like you're going to miss heaven. As a matter of fact, it tells you you can go to hell. Some people tell you like you can go to hell. It wants to, it wants to get you to feel like you're not in God. I curse the spirit that has been trying to sever, sever your relationship with the Lord and to make you feel like you don't go anywhere. I release this, uh, I release this, this thing from you. And I come out to go, get out. God is releasing businesses to someone. I see God giving you an amazing business. Within the next six months, I see everything totally set up. I see inheritance and settlements that's being released. Inheritance and settlements. Inheritance and settlements. God said delay doesn't mean denial. God said delay doesn't mean denial. Inheritance and settlement. Settlement and inheritance. You will get it. It's going to be a fight. It has been a fight. It's been long coming. But you will get it. You'll receive it. It shall, it shall manifest. Amen? And it's going to manifest in the right time. Okay? You will get your uh, inheritance and you will get your settlement. And I saw a ruling in your favor, but they still have not been giving you the money like they should. They still been peace meaning it and peace meaning it. Amen. Instead of giving you in the chunks, this will give it to you. They've been giving you in stages, but it's a small stages, small stages. God is going to give it to you. All right. And open doors of favor and blessings. And, and he's going to move someone out of the way that's been blocking it for you. They've been fighting it and keeping it almost like locked. It was their assignment. But now they're going to lose it for you. So someone's going to be moved out of the way. And someone else is coming. So you find favor in the season concerning the thing that is yours. They wanted to try to steal it. The reason why they're holding on to it because they wanted to pick off it. And tell you it's not there. Tell you, you know, this ain't, this ain't the amount. And you could get this amount. But you can't get that. You know, you can't get this. You can't get this amount. You can only get this amount. In other words, they wanted to take it from you and give you pittance. They want to take the lion share and give you a kitten share and then tell you this is what you get, that you have to settle for it, and that's it. You can get everything that's supposed to come to you in the season, not half breakthroughs, not partial breakthroughs. Huh? 
you can get the right amount. So don't be don't be quick to take what they put on the table because what they put on the table is only maybe one-tenth, not even one-tenth of what they're supposed to give to you. You will get it all that you're supposed to get, amen? I know people say a bird in the hand is better than two in the bush, but in this season, let's stop settling. Let's stop being desperate, and we might need the money too, and yes, it might be, you know, where you have some bills to pay, but they need to give you everything. Satan has been stealing from his from from God's people for too long. Satan has been taking stuff from people that are that are uh, of the household of faith for too long and too long. We've been settled because we feel that we get nothing else, and we feel that we don't take this offer. That's it. You will get your full blessings, your full increase, your full favor. So it's the Spirit of living God. I see it happening for you. I see it happening. You will get it. You will get it. You will find out that God is with you and God is fighting for you and God is going to bless you. Amen. God is blessing you. God is giving you blessings. Blessings. And so I see someone say the volume low. The volume is low. Guys, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you guys hear me? Are you guys hearing me? Let me know if you can hear me. Okay, great. She said she could hear. All right. Go sorrow. Thank you, Father. Thank you for this session. Thank you for this session. Thank you, Father God, for everyone on this live. We draw the bloodline around the house, around their possessions, around the children, around everything that concerns them. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, with Nadia, we plead the blood over this particular session, and we thank you, Lord, for what you for what you're doing, for what you've already done. In Jesus Christ's mighty name, Amen and Amen, Amen, Amen. So I will. I'll definitely see that later. Um, I just been, oh man, I've been reading this book, and uh, it's so good. I, I'm just blown away by it. Let's see if we can find it. Okay, it is. This is a really. <laughs> I've been reading this book all over again, and it's a really good book. It's a really good book, and. It's a foundational book, How to Break Curses, Hexes, Vexes, Spell, and Jinx. And I said, wow, you know, I've read this book mostly, but I think about three or four years ago. And um, and it's really good. If you guys haven't got it, I would encourage you to get this book right here. It's a very good book, guys. And um, it's really, it really goes a lot deeper than I thought. You know, sometimes it's good uh, to... Uh, to look back at the stuff you write and, and you know go back over it, you know and and you know I was praying the prayers in it too as well, so you know I want you guys to to know that you know I love you all, I'm praying for you. Um, hope to see you soon. I think we might have some coming up soon. You know, be an invite. Um, the wife she deals with that mostly, so she's the one sending out. Um, so if you get a link, know that's you. Don't miss it, because <laughs> you know we don't know when we're gonna be doing more of them. So try to come on. That's when we can really. I really minister. Amen. But we want to pray for the nations. You see what's happening. We want to pray for the nations. We want to pray for what's happening in the lands. Amen. We want to take our lands back. You know. And we want to we want to see the land blessed. We want to lift the blight. We want to lift the curse. We want to lift the, you know, the, the thing that's fighting the lands. Amen. And and we know that God is able. Amen. But I speak life over you. I speak life over you. I speak reverse of what they're saying. I come against any witches that are trying to speak death over your life and using this COVID as a way to, to do what they want to do so you could die prematurely. I cancel that in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I decree no virus, no Delta strain, 
and whatever strain shall come nigh your dwelling because you call upon the name of the Lord Jesus. I decree that this is a time when God is what? Uh, taking the ark of safety, the ark of safety, and keeping you and preserving you. Amen. And I speak this thing over all of you in the name of Jesus Christ. It's not <laughs> okay, can you mail books out now? I, I will check. I, I have to check and see if we can do it now. Would love a paper copy. Yes, yes. I totally understand that. And um, I'll check. I'll check. Let me check the mail and see what's going on and get back to you guys because I know with some situation. I think one time it was, then it was off and on, off and on. So we'll see what's happening, you know. And we were hoping that we could get a reduce in the shipping because sometimes the shipping is be a little strange. So we want to make sure everybody can get it. Amen. So God bless you guys. God bless you. God bless you. I have that book. It's worth it. Getting lots of revelation. Praise God. Praise God. Oh, you got it, Tommy? Oh, okay, okay. You got it. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. I, I, I hadn't read it for low, for a long time. I went back up and I was like, wow, you know, God really was inspiring me to write these books, you know. So, you know, I just was like, we just taking my own pills, <laughs> taking my own medicine. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's good to, to, you know, to be able to read your own stuff and, and not be like, like, we just like, like, ah, you know, I can't believe I write it. But that's God. It was under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. So may it set many people free. Amen. Marlene, Adam, God bless you. God bless you, Marlene. Mary Flowers, God bless you. Dad's midwife, God bless you. So God bless you all and power to the people. And there's something called POP, power of prayer. <laughs> Don't forget the power of prayer. Amen. And may God bless you. And I'll see you real soon. In Jesus. Amen. Good night, guys. Good night. All right.